just recapping a little bit from last night. Hebrews 5.14 um, It's because of practice that we train our senses. So part of what we do is training our senses, spirit and soul to discern in the realm of the kingdom, in the realm of the supernatural. It, if you've got a desire and I guess you wouldn't be here if you didn't have a desire uh, it does take discipline to make this stuff effective in our lives everything will try and crowd it out and all sorts of things will try and get in the way but if we do continue through the discipline stage of actually bringing our whole life into order so that we can put God first then we get to a place of delight where we are walking in and experiencing a supernatural lifestyle and encountering God in that way. Um, I said I was going to ask you some accountability questions, <laughs> but I'm going to ask you. They're up to you to answer them yourselves because we're not going to answer them. But have you spent more time or better quality time with God since the last time we met? You need to ask that yourself. Have you meditated on the Word of God in that time? What have you done to build up your spirit? Have you done the homework? <laughs> Have you recorded your experiences? Have you journaled things? Including the things that you struggle with? Because it's good sometimes to actually think, okay, where am I? How are things going? You know, it takes discipline and you have to focus your attention on what you want to accomplish. So you won't develop a more intimate relationship with God unless you spend quality time with him. Bottom line. I encourage people uh, to start off by faith. So the word of God says certain things, stuff I'm teaching. Basically, if you have revelation that it is truth, then in faith you can respond. And God always responds to faith. So even though you might not necessarily see everything in the first person realm of the spirit, you start off with where you are. Because all this stuff is actually training your senses to see in that realm. Because we're not used to our spirit seeing. Everything we've learned is from the outside in. So we've learned spatial awareness from light hitting our lens or eye. Well, you know really well about this. And going through the lens as an upside down image on the back of our retina and signals going by the optic nerve into the brain. So actually I'm seeing you in my brain. So although you're there, that's where I'm actually seeing you, but I've learned to interpret what I've seen so that I see you out there. So I see reality from what I've learned as a learned experience growing up to see and understand and everything like that, Her hearing, touch, I've learned everything to smell, taste, I learned everything by receiving signals from the inside, interpreting them, and in my brain says, this, this is this, this is this, this is this. But my spirit, because it was separated from God, did not have the advantage of that. So my spirit has lost, it's an amnesia, if you like, from its eternal state, and even as children, where children's spirits can be quite sensitive and they do see spiritual things, that very much gets trained out of them so that they're encouraged uh, not to have imaginary friends or those type of things because well, you don't do that. So yeah, it is a process of growth. So we start in faith or you may have gifts that enable you to see or hear in certain ways. So. If we can get pictures or feelings or impressions, that's where we start. And that's, that's really good. You know, it, it just takes time to develop those senses to interpret them, first of all, in the realm of the spirit. And then where we finished last week in looking to start to see in the realm of the spirit so that we train the eye of our spirit to see in a spiritual realm. So the realm of the spirit, which is around us as a dimension, you know, it's not a long way away. It's a dimension which is around us. We learn to see into. 
And once you then start to learn to see into that realm, which usually you start to do with your eyes closed, uh, so you sort of blot everything else out and you try and learn to see, actually, eventually, once you've trained those senses to see, you can see those things with your eyes open. So you can start to see the moving of the Holy Spirit, you can start to see spiritual atmospheres around people and things that are going on in the room, because you've trained your senses to see them. So once you have an encounter like that, that's why it's important to actually anchor that encounter. Don't just, oh, I had a nice encounter, then forget it. Write it out, revisit it, review it, so that then you can then enter into that encounter, not from where you were, but for where your testimony is now. So an encounter becomes a testimony for future encounters, okay? So yeah, it's perfectly understandable that in a process of practice you have to train and it takes people different lengths of time depending on different circumstances of life. You know, I was very, very left-brained and logical, so I had to train myself to be more right-brained and creative in my thinking. It took me ages of consistent meditating on the Word to see things. You know, and yeah, I had a prophetic gift, so often I could see pictures and things in the realm of meetings or worship times and I'd be very sensitive to see things in that realm put me in my own personal time with God I couldn't see anything and it was very frustrating because it was like but I can see here but I can't see here because when the corporate anointings there gifts get activated but this isn't about gifts this is about our relationship with God and developing our actual spiritual senses to see in the realm of the spirit all the time the starting point is we have to clear out the blockages in our soul which will anchor us to the earth and in the realm of the flesh because our soul does not want us to engage in the realm of the spirit because if it does it's going to have to surrender so the soul fights for dominance so the flesh and the spirit compete for control of our life and so when the Holy Spirit is showing you those memories you are seeing the things that he wants you to see so that you can deal with the blockages and then begin to flow. So you're just at this point where, you know, actually it's the right place to be. Because sometimes you can see things and still have a whole load of garbage that you've still got to go back and sort out. So you're just starting at the beginning. Now I went away from reading the Bible in great big chunks and reading the whole thing through every year to reading verses at a time and words at a time and meditating until I drew all the life out of it and I was living it. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you know, I'd read a whole chapter or chapters and then it'd be like, what did I read? Mm. You know, but actually when you, when you focus and meditate on a word or a verse, then you're drawing revelation out of it. And that, that's really, really important. The enemy is always going to want to distract you and not want you to spend quality time with God. <laughs> so, you know, the familiar things that speak to us know our weaknesses and know our areas of vulnerability. So the little whispers and the little things that go on in our head are designed strategy of tactics of familiar spirits which are assigned to us to stop us coming into sonship so that we can sort them out. You know, because bottom line, when sons are actually manifested like Jesus on the earth, the enemy is going to be in big trouble. Therefore, he's doing everything he possibly can to stop the people of God coming into the fullness of their inheritance. So lots of things like distractions and you go and then the, this rings and that goes off and you find, oh, what's, why, why? Nothing was going on before I sat down to do this. And some of that is recognising that and then once you start to recognise it, then you start to take authority over it. Well, to start with, there are little things you can do. Like if there are thoughts coming into your mind of things that you need to deal with and stuff that's just going on in your life, write them down. Write, write it down deal with that later and put it to one side. See, the more you struggle not to think about something, the more you think about it. Because what you turn into multiplies. So if you try not, it's like any situation, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I've done it. Because you're focusing on what you shouldn't, what you're not trying to do, rather than what you should be. And actually the thing is to be positive and focus on the positive things, and those things will go away. But we all get days where stuff happens, you know, so sometimes, yeah, there are days where it's harder than others. Well, why? 
Well, just because it is, it's life, you know, but it does get easier because we, our spirit starts to rule our soul and put it into line. You know, I speak to my soul every day and tell it to submit and to come under the authority of my spirit. And now it's wanting to do so because the benefits that the soul needs are found fully in God. It's just we have to feed our soul with the benefits of God's presence and his peace and joy and love then all the things that we normally get from the world start to fall away because they're only counterfeit and substitutes for what is real you know all sin that we commit is because we've got a desperate need for God but we put that on to something else to meet the need rather than God and that's just how it works but as we're surrendered more and more it does become easier because our spirit is growing. Ultimately what we need is our spirit encompassing our soul and hosting our soul into the presence of God and eventually encompassing our body so that we can walk in the presence of God, body, soul and spirit like Enoch did. See Enoch didn't just walk with God, disappear and then he was in heaven. In Enoch walked with God in the heavenly realms before he was no longer here. Yeah, he was able to walk with God. Noah walked with God. Well, God wasn't on the earth. God was in the heavens. So Noah walked with God in the heavens. That's what he learned to do. So we will learn to do the same thing. Gut instincts, which is part of the flow into the soul, intuition, and through the spirit to the soul, is a good thing. Because we need to flow in intuition. It's just knowing stuff, just gut responding to situations because those are the things that you respond to the quickest yeah. because when you've got to think about it oh, is that right or should I do that too late sometimes but our gut instinct is no and we stop or yeah and we go for it so yeah learning to develop that is really good so there is no one way that's better than any other the idea the best thing is is actually encountering God whether we hear, we feel, we know, we perceive, we see, it really doesn't matter. The thing is, we need revelation of God. And whichever way it comes, it's okay. Now, ultimately, to walk in it, we need to function all of them at the same time. So when I have a heavenly encounter and I go there, rather than having a vision of heaven and seeing something, I have all, this, all the senses. I can taste, touch, smell, feel, all of it, think. You know, I think some of the weirdest things when I haven't had any encounter, because it's like my mind is like, what is that? And it's like, what's going on here? And I'm thinking those things. It's like, oh, I'm not going in there. And it's like, you don't stop, you know, when you, when you have these things. So, yeah, it's okay. And at those feelings, you then ask God, okay, develop those feelings so I understand what I'm feeling more clearly. Um, and God will do so. It'll be fine. One thing I just want to say is, being still is not emptying the mind. Emptying the mind is not a good thing, because you don't know what will fill it. Being still is filling the mind by fixing our eyes on Jesus and focusing on him. Eastern meditation techniques empty the mind because they want something of the spirit realm on the dark side to fill it. But when we meditate and when we're trying to be still, we focus on Jesus, fix our eyes on scripture so that that fills our mind rather than just emptying it, okay? And also last week when I was talking about looking at the hand with your eyes open and then your eyes closed, that whole thing was about um, the eye of your spirit. It's looking, you know, your hand is, doesn't mean anything. It was just something to get you looking to see whether you can see with your eyes closed to start with. And then looking in through the realm of the kingdom. So in a sense, you know, it wasn't anything special about looking at your hand or not looking at your hand. That was just something you could look at anything really. But it was just trying to say, okay, with your eyes closed, start to open the spiritual eye that you, you have to see. Okay, so it wasn't anything particular to do with the hand. So I know there was some questions about that. Now I want to just share briefly a word that in 2008, um, in when was that yeah 2008 uh, I saw out a vision and this was like a really clear 
vision. And I saw a room, it was really large, and all the walls were covered in thick, heavy drapes, and the room was warm and well lit from an electric light. And I, the room was filled with the familiar things, and they all represented things like activities and actions, the things of my life. And I knew it, the whole thing was a representation of my life, and it was very familiar and very comfortable. Then I saw a shaft of light coming into the room through the curtain, and the light was brighter and had a quality about it that drew me to it. And I stood in the light, and it started to increase around me, but I was drawn back to the familiar things, and they sort of called me back into the room. And I turned, and I saw the light again, and it just ret remained that single shaft. Now I knew there was something special about it, so I made a decision in this picture, and this was a very real encounter, I made a decision, I wanted to go after the light, I wanted to stand in the light, so it began to shine brighter and brighter again, and, and it was like, like a pinhole camera, it's like I saw like through a dot, I saw an image, um, and I could see there was something, something else. You know, and that's, it was a weird, it was, this is before I had any sort of heavenly encounter stuff. So this is, it was quite a, a weird thing, but I knew there was something. Um, but then the familiar started to call me back. But this time I, I didn't listen to it and I was determined to stay. Then the whole drapes began to part. And it was like I looked out on a whole new world. Um, to start with, it was just a glimpse. Um, but that really made me determined to see more and, and it was like the whole world was there but it was covered with like a sort of net curtain effect so it reduced the power of the light um, so that I could get my eyes accustomed to it to the brightness and and I couldn't really see that clearly to start with but I knew this was something new and different um, but the more intensely I began to focus and desire the clearer it got and I was beginning to see into a reality um, which I didn't have a grid for, but I just knew it was something in this which was different. Um, and basically when that started to go, then I turned off the light and everything in the room just seemed different. Everything that was familiar to me, I saw in a different light. Um, and I saw, it, you know, it wasn't just like a window like a plane in front of me, but the drapes started to go right back into a whole 360 view until I could see all around like I was looking into reality from God's perspective. Now, that was 2008, September 2008, and that's all I could see. But 2012, where are we now? Are we September? Yeah, we are September. So it's basically two years ago. Four years, oh. is it? Four years ago. Four years ago. <laughs> wow. Um, essentially that whole prophetic realm and the realms of heaven have opened up because I've pursued it but there's always the desire to draw us back to the familiar and the safe and what we know and you know for me it's like I, God reminded me of this the last time we actually were here when I was on the floor and I was talking to him and he reminded me so you need to go and look at what I showed you in, in 2008 and I was like what did you show me and I write everything down so I get easy to go back to it but it's so easy to forget that that's four years ago and now I'm walking in that realm not just seeing it like a pinhole or through a veil I'm walking in it so what's taken me four years by me sharing the stuff that I've learned you can do it in a lot quicker time you know, but you do have to pursue and follow it and do it. but it, it will get clearer and clearer as you pursue it now what we saw last time is God's voice is a spontaneous flow of thoughts and pictures and we need to be still and fix our eyes on Jesus and to journal what he shows us now there are some ways of doing that when you come into the presence of God you can talk to him so this is one way of doing it it's like you know, I'm here Lord I watch for you. I listen for your voice. What do you want to show me today? What do you want to speak to me about today? Take me to you. I want to see you, Lord. Just talk to him. You know, find your own things. It's like I quiet myself before you, Lord. I ask for vision. 
What do you want to speak to me about? What do you want to show me? I trust that the bubbling spontaneous thoughts are your spirit. I'll write down what you speak to me and what you show me. I wait for you, Lord. Just position yourself before the Lord so that he can speak to you. It's like you're showing the desires of your heart by asking him. It's like it says in James, we haven't got because we didn't ask. So ask for what you want. If you want to have an increase in vision, if you want to have an increase of hearing, ask. You know, and come before God expectantly and ask him to open up the revelatory realms that you want to flow in. Now, let's, let's do some practice. And I'm gonna, we're going to practice some of the same things, but you're going to be better at them this time because you're more familiar with it. It's, when you practice, it means you do the same things over and over again until you get good at them. You know, don't try and think, oh, well, I'll do something more and different because that's a bit, you know, naff. Actually, you just grow by practicing the basics. So let's spend a couple of minutes praying in tongues out loud. And while you're praying in tongues out loud, if there's anything that comes into your mind about things you need to confess, things you need to deal with for the day, any burdens you're carrying right now, we want to be coming into the presence of God. So we're going to cast everything on him. So a couple of minutes doing that and then... We'll pray in tongues on the inside, like last time, remember, prayed in tongues on the outside, it loud, and then we prayed in tongues on the inside, in our mind or in our belly. If you can do it in your belly, it's great, because um, you don't have to clog up your brain with, with the stuff that's coming out. But while you're doing that, we'll just look at Jesus, close your eyes and picture looking at Jesus. And if you struggle looking at Jesus, there's a picture of him there. So we'll do the first bit first. So let's just pray in tongues. Bless you, Lord. Oriando rosho ma katarindi arama arindi ma shori tikata iti arandariando rosho mama arindi sharando rokoti shama katarindi ma arindi sharando roma mama ki arandariando rosho ma katarindi aroma iarando rosho ma kati arama iarando rosho mama kuti shando roma mama. Yarindi shando roma mama katarondo rosho mama mama. Kiarindi arando riando roma matri sharando roma mama. Kiarando rosho makati arindi shiando rando riando roma makata shiando roma mama kati arindi ma. Orando roma. Yeah, bless you, Lord God. Okay, now let's just pray in tongues on the inside, and while you're doing that, look at the screen or just close your eyes and just picture Jesus just look into his eyes look into his face while you're praying in tongues on the inside Okay, so was that 
any easier this time? Okay. See, what you're, what you're doing in these exercises is learning to do more than one thing at the same time. Because that's what we're looking to develop, a lifestyle where we can hear the flow of the Spirit at any time, at any point in time. So, right now, I can be speaking to you, but inside I can be praying in tongues. And by praying in tongues, I can be receiving a flow of revelation in which to speak. Or I can be, say you're on a train or you're in somewhere and you can't pray in tongues out loud. Actually, you can be praying in tongues on the inside, but also you can be thinking and meditating. So you can be thinking of a scripture, you can be thinking of Jesus or a picture. So you can do things all the time at the same. So ultimately, what you can be doing is praying in tongues from, from your belly, which doesn't form words in your mind or sort of in your mouth. Because that's what you tend to do to start with. You're almost like you're trying not to say it out loud. So you're trying to keep it in your head, which is okay. But once you get practice, you can get that bubbling up from your very innermost being. So that in your mind, you can be seeing, picturing and thinking while praying in tongues. So you can get the flow of thoughts and continue your spirit being built up. Because your spirit is being edified while you're praying in tongues. So you can tune in easier. And it's just learning to practice doing these things you see when first god spoke to me you know praying in tongues you know it was like i i used to do it now and again and then i was the holy spirit started to convict me about praying in tongues more often and and god spoke to me said i want you to pray in tongues for 15 minutes and it was like oh 15 minutes sounded like eternity because it was like, because what I was doing was trying not to think of anything and pray in tongues. Mm. I just didn't get the point that you're actually supposed to pray in tongues while doing other stuff. So I could have been reading the Bible. I could have been, but I was just trying to pray in tongues without trying to do anything else. And, and it was just like really frustrating. And 15 minutes was like a long, long time, you know. And then actually the first time God spoke and said, I want you to pray in tongues for an hour. It was like, oh, my word, an hour, how can I personally pray in tongues for an hour? But after a couple of days of like basically being obedient, then God, so I had one of those Homer Simpson moments. It was a do. <laughs> yeah, because God spoke and sort of said, what are you trying to do? Tongues is supposed to, so you can engage with me, not stop anything else. You're supposed to be able to do these other things at the same time. And it was just such a breakthrough that then I could just do all this stuff. Now I pray in tongues all the time. You know, if I'm sat at my desk working stuff, I'm just praying in tongues. You know, because I might as well be doing something positive to join me and get a flow of the Spirit. And so you can learn to engage the presence of God all the time. It's called practicing the presence of God. Recentering ourselves back, thinking about God when we've drifted off into other things and actually tongues helps you do it and even if it's like okay I'm going to pray in tongues for a minute every hour you set your watch with a little beep and it so goes beeps right I'm going to pray in tongues for an hour I'm going to think you know, and you can bring that down to actually every two minutes I'm thinking about God and your whole life can then be a flow of the presence of God and God will enable you to do things like your normal everyday activities and be engaged with him at the same time and that's what we want we want to be completely engaged with him, but completely able to do the best we possibly can with everything we do. And that's what God enables us to actually do. Now, last time we did this little exercise as well. Now, uh, I want to, to go through the same thing. So we're going to pray in tongues and on the inside and listen to Psalm 23. But... Um, you'll, you'll just have to listen it's fine you just listen to it because I'll, I'll read it out but while you're doing it just start to picture Psalm 23 you know and it may be you just get to the first bit like the Lord is my shepherd it may be you get to the bit I'm lying down in green pastures that's the bit I love I just like lying down in green pastures with Jesus and just chilling out with him by quiet waters it may be that you see the table set before you in the presence of your enemies and you start eating stuff who knows but just start to picture and then as we go from that point i went then to go once once the bit about psalm 23 is stopped 
I want you to then start to converse with Jesus. He's sitting with you in that meadow and you can talk to him. So there is a bit of a cliche picture of him, but if you don't know what he looks like as a shepherd, that might be a good thing to look at. But then ask Jesus a question, okay? Anything that you, you want to know. Don't, don't ask him, who are you going to marry, all that sort of stuff, because this is, we want to learn just to engage with him. But ask him how he feels about you. Ask him to show you how much he loves you. Ask him to give you a revelation of a scripture or something. So then get your notepad and then just start to write the things that start to flow. Because that's all you do. Don't analyse it. Don't think about it. Just write. Now, I know some of you struggled with this a bit last time. So let's just separate. close your eyes and just start to picture it.
Did anyone hear a flow of things to write down? Okay, anyone struggle? Yeah, okay. Now, do you find it easy to see things rather than hear things? See, when, when we struggle to, to hear a flow of things, you may get impressions and you may get feelings rather than words. Just write them down. Yeah, you know, see, some of it is just learning to engage. And you know, I've practiced this a lot. So for me, it's really easy. I ask the question and I write down the answers. I don't think about what I'm writing. I just write down the answer. Then afterwards, go back and look at it. When you're learning, actually, most of the time when we're learning, it's like we're not sure and quite often it's like, well, am I hearing anything or what is what I'm hearing? Just me making it up and you'll get those little things that come and try and distract you. Um, if you can't hear anything at all and when you're do doing that exercise, try and think of a scripture so ask God to show you a scripture to speak to you because it's all about practicing hearing and some of us find it easier to hear in different ways okay if you if you come into the presence of God like you're coming to the shepherd the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he leads me beside quiet still quiet green pastures green waters, whatever it is, quiet waters, and then what happens? He restores my soul. So, absolutely, you're, you need to expect your soul to find restoration. And so tears, emotions, are part of the process of restoring our soul. And, you know, tr when, when that happens, ask him, okay, God, what, what are you doing? So the question you ask, ask him, well, what are you doing? Are you healing me? Whatever. And just see what he says. You know, actually, if you don't, you don't need to know. I mean, it's like sometimes we like to know everything because we, we want to know. But actually, sometimes it's just like go with the flow of the emotions and then enter in because it's like it's a restorative pr process. Sometimes we just need to let things go. And God may be touching an air of hurt or something and restoring it you know but yeah go go with the flow of it but it's good because you're connecting you know emotions are good things to connect with god he wants us to feel we should feel loved and accepted you know if we don't feel loved and accepted then actually we're not actually feeling loved and accepted we're supposed to feel it it's, it's okay to feel you know and uh you know god wants us to experience these things so that we're not just knowing stuff in our head but we're encountering him with body motions everything okay now this is a familiar picture for, for most of you when we talked earlier about uh, dealing with you know, hazel was talking about the stuff that was coming up as she started to focus on god this is what we want we want a flow from the presence of god on the inside of us out through the gate of first love to our spirit and all the spiritual senses that we've got to flow out to our soul and then to our body so if those gates or doorways are blocked then we need to unblock them and it is the things that are usually in our soul that are blockages our spirit gates often are just unused so the more we use them and the more we practice the more they start to flow and obviously we've gone through a lot of this how to open the gates and that stuff so I'm not going to go in that now but it's important that we know that our spirit gates are fear of God reverence prayer hope faith revelation intuition and there is there is a whole heavenly gate that opens up the whole key about it is worship will we surrender in obedience to God because we can do all the other things and have wonderful visions, dreams, pictures, awesome stuff. And if we don't surrender to the, to the presence of God in worship, then it's a waste of time. Because ultimately all those pictures and things that we get, faith, hope, revelation, will be leading us somewhere. 
obedience. Well, that's the actual Hebrew word for worship. It means to bow down. Like, you know, when they came before a king and they sort of, you know, they, people do that mockingly quite often. They sort of put their arms up and they, that's what obedience means. It means just bowing down before the presence of God. In surrender, effectively, so saying, you're God and I'm not. Okay, so we need to open those spiritual gates and get them flowing. So what I'd encourage people to do in this stuff is just to meditate on one of them. So, okay, I'm going to look at the reverence gate. God, I'm just going to come in your presence. I want to focus on reverence. Show me what reverence is. And allow the spirit to, just, you know, that's what I did when I understood all these things. Because I, I went into it without any understanding of what they were. I didn't make an assumption that I knew what revelation was or faith or hope. I let God tell me. So I went through every one of those gates and said, God, you know, I'm going to meditate here. And sometimes I'll be 45 minutes an hour just on one gate. And as I'm meditating and I'm starting to picture this gate, see it open, make Jesus Lord of the gate. Come in, flow through this gate, activate it. Show me what it is, you know, and, and the whole thing of reverence was a big one for me because it, it really showed me that, you know, it would, if that gate is functioning, everything I do will be led by a desire to honour and respect God. And I won't do anything to disrespect him or ding, bring dishonour or disrepute to him because that gate is functioning. And of course, the gate then comes into the soul and flows usually through our conscience. So it will guide and direct us in our conscience. So we just learn how to add a flow through them. The idea is that we want everything flowing inside. Spirit to the soul and then through the soul to the body. See the spirit cannot engage the natural world without going through the soul, without encompassing the soul because that the soul is where we think, where we, where we feel, where those things operate, where our mind, our reason is. And so we need them. But we need them in submission to the spirit, not acting independently on their own. So, what we're learning to do is to tune into God's voice on the inside. Learning to see from the inside. Learning to hear from the inside. Learning to feel from the inside. To be guided from the inside. To smell from the inside. You know, how can I smell from the inside? Because your spiritual senses can smell the fragrance of God's presence. Hence, when we're in a room, and there is a fragrance that some people can smell and some people can't when angels are present some people smell fragrances other people are in the same spot and it's like i don't smell anything simply because their spiritual senses are not yet attuned so they've never learned you know i couldn't smell i i don't smell an awful lot but it's like some of the when we had the revival meetings and the smells that were around it was like whoa this is really good you know, and even when I had the perfume all coming out of my hands and stuff like that, you know, it's pretty bizarre stuff. But it was a learning to flow. So you can learn to touch from the inside. In other words, when you touch something, you're not picking up signals from that, you're imparting something. So effectively, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, so that vibrating grace of God can work through your hands. Hence, your hands get hot or they vibrate because it's coming from the inside out. You're not picking up the vibrations from the outside in. Everything's flowing from the inside. And that's why we need to get all these gates open and flowing and functioning. The spirit, soul and body gates, yeah. They're just basically doorways or spiritual senses as well. I like to, to look at them. They're senses which are pictured as gateways to open and flow. So that God who is in me can flow through my spirit, through my soul and out through my body to the world around me so that the world can engage God through me. Um, and as we learn how to do it, um, it becomes easier to flow. And you can then draw on the anointing and the presence of God who is in you to manifest through you. When we're in a room and the anointing's present, it's really easy to minister to people. You just say boo, and God does something. You don't really have to do an awful lot. But actually, when you're in a place where you're on your own and it's like it's you and the person or and you know, or you're out on the street on healing on the streets or something like that. And it's like, well, what do I do now? It's like I haven't got an hour of worship behind me and the angels all, all there and this one of play. You need to draw on the anointing that's on the inside. So you're drawing on revelation. 
and when revelation and faith then come to maybe your mind as a picture or your, your eyes in, in reason or imagination you see something then you start to activate it and it's like when your faith mixes with grace you get power you get a charge of anointing and you can draw and manifest that so sometimes it's like I feel dry as a bone and I'm like I ain't got a clue what to pray and so what, I, what I'm doing in, in tongues on the inside I am then drawing on revelation so I'm opening that gate and I'm allowing the spirit of God to move through that and in fact it's not just allowing you can draw on it it's your spirit it's your spirit gates you can activate them so if you need intuition start activating that gate so you, as you meditate on them they start to actually operate because most of us we haven't really operated them because we've never even known they were there so we just operated on the gifts of the spirit now the gifts of the spirit are great but the gifts of the spirit is when the spirit wants actually I need to operate when I want as led by the spirit but when I want because God tells me to lay hands on the sick and see them recover so I need to be able to draw on the presence of God and the anointing on the inside and activate that to release power and anointing but the first one we have to open is the first love gate and that is letting God into our life because God comes to live in us but God is not going to bully us or overpower us actually he wants cooperation from us so we need to desire Revelation 3.20 Behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me talking about an intimacy of relationship this is what Jesus did when he sat down with his disciples and they just lay around talking and fellowshipping eating together this is the picture so picture Jesus is on the inside okay now only close your eyes and just activate that picture a door picture this door and it's got light behind it all around the edges just bursting to get out start with a door that you recognize if you're struggling to picture a door open your eyes and look at a door in the room and picture it because use a natural thing if you can't see something with your imagination so picture the door it's got a handle on your side okay for those of you who might not see a picture of the door with light coming around it there's one to get you going on the screen All right. now is anyone cannot picture anything with their imagination no so you can all use your imagination to see something well, that's a really great start you know because that's where we start it's our imagination that's supposed to have things projected on so if we want to see a door then we can activate our imagination to see a door now sometimes God activates our imagination and shows us things like visions and pictures and dreams that's where they get shown on the screen of our imagination but we can use it to engage God in the spirit so let's practice that and I want to we'll play some music while we're doing it and I want to encourage you find a, a comfortable spot or wherever and I want you to imagine that God is saying to you let me in he's behind that door he's speaking to you and he's saying let me in so start to picture the door it's the door of first love now how you see this door okay how you actually see it may indicate the state that it's in okay so once you see it open the door invite God in 
and start to experience his presence.
Okay. Well. Oof. Sometimes you go to a place and it's like, can't come back. It's like, How many saw that door, that gate, and it was blocked? Anyone was anyone's gate blocked? Nope. Good. Which just means you've already done some work. Because that first love gate is often the one that's is blocked because of the damage that we've had in first love areas of our life. Um, and so it can be blocked. And you might see it as having chains around it or barred or brambles all over it, lots of different pictures people have and some of the gates as you meditate on them you might see them as blocked and if they're blocked it's asking God what's what's the blockage and getting revelation and then dealing with that. Um, you can basically uh, pile in and open the gates. You know, for me it was a crash course. Um, I wanted these gates open so I spent several weeks just meditating and doing it every day until they were open. Um, the soul gates are the ones that are usually blocked or damaged um, or affected by sin or our life. That's the conscience, reason, imagination, conscious mind, subconscious mind, emotions and will. And all of those uh, emotions and different senses of our soul are designed to feed the conscious mind the information it needs to make a choice. Now, what we want is to choose to do what Jesus directs us rather than what the soul wants to do of its own. So we have to learn to discern uh, from the inside what is the flow of the Spirit of God coming to us so that through worship we can choose to be obedient and make that choice. But if there are lots of things that are in the way of our conscience or our reason we need to deal with them. So for me, it's like Galatians 2.20, you know, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. So it's like, I need my soul dealt with if I'm going to flow fully in the Spirit. So I can become a channel or a gateway of God to the world around me. Now for me, I went head on at this uh, to unblock those gates. I looked at everything for each year of my life. I looked at each gate and looked at the things that would affect and block those gates that the enemy would use to stop me flowing. Now you can do this over a period of time. I basically went through every year of my life in about two, two weeks. Um, Oh, and it was pretty emotional and quite draining. I did three or four years at a time and then got absolutely whacked. So I used to just, I was in the middle of a fast at the time, so it was, I had the time to do it. Yeah. Well, you have to take it bit by bit. So I started, I can't remember years yeah, but nor could I. But it doesn't really matter what you can remember, it's what God shows you. Well, uh, well, basically what I did, I was ruthless and honest and open to the light to discern anything that would have negatively affected my soul. So most of it's to do with sin or attitudes or things I've done. And so I started uh, to identify patterns of sin, weaknesses, hurts, mindsets, character issues and, uh, and no arguments. It's like, oh, I'm going to argue with God. It's like, God, show me. You know, oh, I didn't really think I was like that. Uh, well, you are. So deal with it. And it's like, I, I, I know that that's not an easy thing to do in that short period of time. But I wanted to get these things open so I could teach other people to do it. And so I could flow in it. So I went head on straight for it. You know, you do it at the time scale and the things that you can do it in. So... You know, when God showed me things, I owned it, confessed it, I repented of it, I renounced it, I forgave if I needed to forgive. You know, I dealt with the stuff. And the blockages started to get removed. So my imagination became clearer, my conscience was sharper, my emotions were less damaged. You know, I dealt with things as God showed me. Now this mostly is in the area of behaviour. 
um, you know, there's other layers, which is what we'd go through on Sunday, of other deeper things that are need dealing with. But this was on the surface layer of my behaviour and the things that I had done to affect my soul and my the gates of my soul. So, in my conscience, I looked at the sin I committed, any deception, pride, independence, judgment, criticism and defensiveness that I had done. Now, when you do those things, it inoculates the conscience so that those things don't seem wrong anymore. Or you don't even realise they are wrong. So, yeah, for me, that's where I started. I looked at my imagination. Every image, TV, film, book, fantasy games, internet, magazines, real life, anything I'd seen that the enemy could use to block a flow of the spirit so that okay you're in worship it's wonderful or you're in a time of intimacy with God and you're just having this wonderful feeling so all of a sudden you get this horrible image that comes in shed we need to get rid of those images so take the blood of Jesus paint them out get rid of them a lot of this teaching is on the on the CD in the whole gateway teachings Ian Clayton stuff on that uh, but I can't remember things anymore that I've seen it does work but you've got to work at it. So I did that. Uh, then I looked at um, my mind. Were there strongholds? Patterns of thinking that were defending my belief systems. Words that have been spoken over me. Curses. Words I'd spoken which were negative. Fear. False doctrine. Lies. Anything that were operating in my mind I dealt with. Emotions. Rejection. Disappointments. Fear unforgiveness, betrayal, all that stuff, any vows I'd make in emotionally. Um, and then my will, where I'd been rebellious, stubborn, controlled things. I had to repent and renounce it. Now I did that for each year. So I started for me, it seemed the most sensible thing was to start now, because I remembered stuff now and it was much more easy to get in the pattern of God showing me, well, where was my sin? You know, because you know, I didn't consciously know that I had a whole pattern of things going on. If I had done, I would have dealt with them before. So I asked God to show me. Show me the areas that I overlooked or, you know, I excused or didn't accept were sin or just didn't, didn't even understand and ask for revelation. If nothing came, I just generally repented. God, I repent of anything I've done to damage my conscience, any sin I've committed that I can't remember, I ask you to cleanse me from it, I repent, I renounce it. That's the sort of prayer that I prayed. You know, so in doing that, then I I began to flow. And therefore I went back in each year, asked God to show me. If he didn't show me anything specific, I prayed generally. Generally he showed me things. Right back to when I was in the womb. And okay, I wouldn't encourage you to just do it like I did, but I would encourage you to start doing it and then begin to deal with the blockages and things that are in your life. I mean, it's like if you've got a desire for purity, for refining, then we've all been through this process a long time, probably, but this is just a way of actually really hitting it to block, get the blockages removed because you want to be flowing more clearly. It's like God will have done a lot of things in our lives over the period of time and actually we may well have all re always repented of various things but these were things that for me it just God showed me things which I knew I needed to deal with it's like the whole Jaharis window thing yeah. you know we've got the revealed self in the stuff we've got hidden self blind self you know there's the stuff that we we'll let everyone know and there's the stuff that we kept we don't want anyone to know and there's the stuff that we don't know and other people do that's where we need to, to tell each other the things that we see in love. Because if we're blind, how are we going to know? God may, through this process, show us. Or he may use someone else to show us. And if he uses someone else to show us, don't be defensive. I say to someone, I'll go away and I'll see God on that. Not, oh, what you're on about. I'm not having that. You know, which is what tends to be our reaction when someone tells us a fault that we've got. But actually, if we want to be free, better someone tells us. Faithful are the wounds of a brother, it says in, in Proverbs. Yeah. And actually, it's true. It's like, I'd rather someone told me. Yeah. You know, so when we 
um, step into the presence of God and you know we practice stepping in and stepping out and this is something I would encourage you to practice all the time the, the kingdom of heaven is as close to you as my hand is to my face and all I have to do is turn into it to engage it so when I walk through a doorway I think I'm stepping into the presence of God into the heavenly realms and when you step into the presence of God through the pathway or the veil of Jesus the cross whatever illustration you want to use Jesus says he's opened the veil so we can step in when you step in you are stepping into the presence of God and when you step into the presence of God he gives you new robes of righteousness you don't even have to do anything and he starts to work righteous cleansing in your life so if you start putting all these things together it starts to form a whole pathway of a lifestyle of restoration and wholeness and it's not just one thing works we just need to do all of them together bit by bit so I practice stepping in all the time you know when I when I was first doing this I used to every time I walk through a door I'm like, oh, stepping in the presence of God it's like, oh yeah okay I'm stepping back out and it's like that's really focusing during your day it's almost like right okay oh yeah I've been drifting around okay I'm just gonna reset I'm gonna step in the presence of God anything you want to show me do you need to direct me to anything cleanse me it's like I step back out refreshed and invigorated it's just practice now as you practice it becomes more than just an exercise actually things happen you may not even perceivably notice things happen to start with but you cannot by faith step into the presence of God and nothing happen because immediately you're going to be cleansed and righteous so you're going to feel different and the more that takes place the more sensitive you become to what God is doing in your life and the more sensitive you can become for his presence and you can actually feel different but you just have to practice. He wants to cleanse anything that the enemy can use to negatively affect us. Personally, because there are things like that in, say, something like the Lord of the Rings, which actually are quite gory and whatever, but what they're portraying is uh, victory of evil over, you know, righteousness over, over evil. And, you know, God can use things like that to speak to us. But some people might be more sensitive to negative things than others. You know, so for some people that might be, whoa, that, that, that really scary, that affects me, and I, whatever. So I think it's individual, and we, we have to go on our consciences and allow God to show us. And actually, you know, end of the day, if it's any doubt, I'll get rid of it. You know, I'll, I'll, but I know for me, it's like I had to go through a whole load of things, and just blo what I did, I just blotted them out. Got a paintbrush with the blood of Jesus. Right, this is this image. I own it, I recognise, I saw that, I repent, I renounce of it, and I blot it out. Now I'm having it removed from the memory which is in my heart. So that it's gone from my memory. So it's no longer there. So there are certain things, I have holes in my memory that I cannot remember them. And I don't want to, so I'm not going to go searching for them. Oh no, you, you just need to find a way that works for you. Yeah. You know, you might say, well, I'll, I'll do a year every week or a month, every month it might take you a while but you know the quicker you do it the more benefit you'll get out of it but it can be quite emotionally draining particularly when you God shows you stuff which you forgot or you never remembered in the first place and there are stuff there are holes that we've gone around you know trauma can cause real serious problems in our memories and some things we remember really vividly and they're in our face and really, really bad. And other things, we are, they're so bad we forget them. Yeah. So we blot them out. I, I think to be wise, I would take it at a pace which enables you to function yeah. in life and not be completely wrecked. Yeah. It's like I was easy for me. I was in a fast. Yeah. Didn't have to think about anybody or anything else. So it's like I focused on it, but I learned how to do it. And since the fast, I've gone back and looked at each month of my life. In a sense, it's like sometimes you just need to rest. And then you need to allow God to restore you and make you whole so that, and heal you. And that, sometimes that's a bit of a process. So although you can sort of deal with stuff, 
you need to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's doing. And that can be a process which takes some time, particularly if he wants you to actually embrace what's happened and then change and, and put it into practice in a particular area. But it does take time. But stepping in and stepping out, you know, is a good thing. And I'd encourage you to just practice. We, we do it sometimes and we'll do it. We'll do it. Let's do it right now. Um, uh, as we pray this, basically, this is stepping into the presence of God and it is giving him permission to clean out all those soul blockages. You don't have to stand up if you don't want to. In the day, it's up to you. It's like stepping in is not a... It's not actually a physical thing. We do it physically because it just symbolises we stepped in. You know, half the time I'm stepping in and out when I'm sitting down or lying in a bed. So, you know, so you know, if you if you want to just visualise your step, that's fine. If you want to stand up and do it, that's no problem. But let's let's pray this prayer together. So it's like, Father, by faith, I choose to step into your heavenly presence. I receive your acceptance, love mercy and grace I stand in the victory of the cross forgiven, justified and cleansed I thank you that you clothe me in white robes of righteousness I am the righteousness of God in Christ Father I choose to give you full permission to do whatever it takes to change me and transform me into the image of Jesus I give you full permission to remove all stumbling blocks from me I give you full permission to use whatever means you see fit to purify, refine and restore me to my original eternal condition. Father, I choose to deny myself and surrender control of my life to you. I give you my conscience. I repent and renounce of anything that has damaged my conscience. I ask you to purify and restore my conscience, direct and protect me through my conscience by a flow of reverence and fear of the Lord. Father, I choose to deny myself and surrender my control of my life to you. I give you my reason centre. I repent and renounce doubt, unbelief, rationalism, scepticism, cynicism and denial. I ask you to cleanse me of all false doctrine, philosophies and ideas. I ask you to renew and restore my reason. Use my reason to interpret your thoughts and to understand your ways. Father, I choose to deny myself and surrender control of my life to you. I give you my imagination. I repent and renounce of viewing any image that's polluted me. I ask you to blot out every negative image with the blood of Jesus. Purify, restore my imagination, restore my screen, vision and revelation. Father, I choose to deny myself and surrender control of my life to you. I give you my heart, my subconscious mind. I repent and renounce all strongholds, negative belief and value systems vows, words, curses, doctrines, triggers, coping and defence mechanisms. I ask you to cleanse every negative memory, purify, restore and reprogram my heart with your truth, values and my destiny. Father, I choose to deny myself and surrender control of my life to you. I give you my emotions. I repent and renounce of all unforgiveness, bitterness and anger. I ask you to purify and restore my emotions I use my emotions to feel your heart and guide me through intuition. Father, I choose to deny myself and surrender control of my life to you. I give you my will. I repent and renounce all sin, rebellion, stubbornness, willfulness, control, fear, doubt, unbelief and indecision. I ask you to purify and restore my will, restore courage, perseverance and boldness. Use my will to enable me to do your will through obedience and true worship. Father, I surrender my spirit, soul and body to you. I declare that Jesus is Lord of the gates of my life. I step back into this realm, readily available to do your will and purposes. Manifest your glory and presence in and through my life. Manifest your kingdom, authority and power through me and around me. Now, it won't all be done because you prayed that prayer. What it will is open up the opportunity for God to start working more deeply to purify and to cleanse. What I would do, I would pray those prayers every single day. You know, for me, that's what I did. I developed those prayers by praying them every single day until I could pray them off by heart and I could pray them wherever I was, whatever I was doing. So in the morning when I'd open up my soul gates 
and, and said to God, Jesus, you are Lord of these gates. I surrender them to you to purify them, prepare them. You know, it's like now I don't necessarily do that all the time because I've done a lot of it. But sometimes, usually once, twice a month, I go back and think, right, I'm going to make sure my conscience is still clean. I want to make sure nothing's come in. So I'll just go through it just to make sure that I'm living this stuff out because it's so easy to pick stuff up, isn't it? You know, it was like earlier on, it was like when we were engaged, you know, opening the door. Did everyone sort of see the door open and encounter Jesus in some way? For me, it's like I was sat there and you know, obviously I've done this, I did this already this morning. So I thought, well, I have no point really opening it again, is it? So I just thought, okay, God, what do you want to do? And so he took me by the hand. He said, right, I want to take you here. And he took me to the top of this mountain and uh, he showed me this throne and uh, he said, right, sit on it. And uh, as I sat on it, it was this big gold throne, but it was like this reclining thing. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, because uh, these things are very symbolic. You know, it's like the symbolism of, of these encounters, you know, important to understand. So it's like, okay, what are you doing? So he says, right, you need to rest. It's like you need to recline here because this throne was on the mountain of harmony. So it's like, and then he started to speak to me. He said, right, you've not been at rest. And the last couple of days I've noticed that I've been a bit impatient with certain things. And so I, you know, I usually know you know, something's going on. So I've been asking God, okay, what is it? Why am I impatient? You know, what's going on? You know, because it's good to ask. You know, and God will start to show you. So he basically showed me, he says, right, you know, you have been anxious over something that's coming. And then he took me through dealing with that. And he spoke to me about trusting him and showed me what to do in this situation. But that's the sort of relationship that you can develop. You know, and from that authority place of a throne, I was then able to pronounce blessing, harmony, unity, peace into situations. Because then you can then open up the everlasting doors and see the glory of God come round your life. But you've got to get to live in authority. Now, a lot of what we've been doing is just focusing on sort of building up our spirit and engaging with God. You know, we've not done too much stuff yet in the heavenly realms, but that's where you will we'll end up going you know so a lot of this stuff is out of this work we have our heart which is our subconscious mind it's like a garden and the scroll of our destiny is there within our heart then within us there's the kingdom which is the seat of government the seat of rest which is in our lives we have our conscious mind and we have our spirit which is enveloped in the membrane that goes over our brain and down our spinal column completely separate from our blood that's that's the only part of our body that's separate from our blood hence it's separate because blood needs purifying and refining because it comes from the record of our past that has a door in there which you open that's the door you open every day the door of first love into the spirit so we invite the presence of God into our spirit through that door. That door is connected to the heavenly realms because it's coming from Jesus who is the flowing as the river of life that flows through us. So what we need to do, we need to open that door daily, invite God onto the throne of our life, invite him into our heart to then go round our conscious mind and transform us. And then come back into our heart and flow around. So everything is flowing from the Spirit of God who's ruling on the throne of our life. And as we grow in our relationship with God, He will teach us to rule on that throne. So, in a sense, then eventually you start to get the power and the river of God flowing through you. Because the river of life is not supposed to be in us for our benefit alone. It's supposed to flow through us to the world around us. Jesus in John 7, 38, you know, it says, you know, that rivers of living water would flow from your innermost being. That's where they flow, from the seat of government on our life, the kingdom that's within us. So that's how it all works. I think, I think we'll finish there, all right? Because I think, um, or do you want to do one more exercise? I don't know, it's up to you. Yeah. One more exercise? Okay, well, what we'll do, I'll skip a few slides and we'll just go on to the exercise that we did like last time
Um, and we're going to look at now engaging the eye of the spirit. So our imagination can receive visions and dreams, but also we need to see from the inside out. So our spirit needs to see and go through that portal into the realm of the kingdom. So what we're going to do is uh, just do basically a very similar exercise to last time, but this time, because you've done it before, it's going to be easier for you to engage. So when you close your eyes, you've got black. Okay. So, but we're now going to start to engage that blackness and see light. So close your eyes and then open them and again just look at your, look at your hand just as the point of focus so you look at your hand close your eyes and see your hand now from that point use your hand to draw back the curtain that is that dark veil so you can then start to see into the kingdom which is in light so with your eyes closed seeing with the eye of your spirit just start to see beyond the veil into the realm of the kingdom you might see light you might see a portal you might see a gateway
I don't know what you saw. Some of you are more attuned to this stuff. You may have seen right into the kingdom. Um, you may have seen all sorts of things. Who saw actually specific things? Okay. Anything sort of symbolic? Do you see trees? Do you see angels? Do you waterfalls, rivers? What do you see? Now, when you see things, you probably won't just see things. Now, some people might have found that music a bit distracting because there was things going on. Now, I chose it specifically because actually in heaven there are things going on. And actually there are sounds and there's water you can hear and there's angels flapping around. Sometimes there are birds. There are all sorts of creatures and things that can be quite distracting. But you just have to actually absorb the atmosphere when you're in that realm. Did anyone just see light or colour? From there, you're now seeing those colours are, are angels, cashmelium, angels. They bring swirls of colour that cover us with the glory of God and the presence of God. Often we see those clouds because there's like a veil that you're going through into something more. So now you've sort of got there, now you can start there and pursue it yourself. Because you, you can go back to those places. You know, it isn't like Earth, okay? And everything that there has a fragrance, a sense of, even like the grass has something that gives you meaning to something. It's just, you know, you just learn to, to adapt, to, to pick up the signals and the senses of it. And if you're ever unclear about what something means, just go back and meditate and ask God to show you what he was trying to, to show you. You know, what was he trying to show you in that picture? You know, because there would have been something that is what he was trying to get over, but there are also sometimes the specifics have meanings, and you have to find that out. Sometimes it's just the broader picture, but sometimes it's allegorical, and there are different things in what we see and where we go that God wants to show us. You know, but you know, sometimes you may just see colour. Um, that's okay. That's where you start. You know, lots of different things. You know. There's a, there's a really nice picture that someone painted from their place in, where they went into the heavenly realms. Um, I wish I could paint like that, but I can't. Um, another one, which is uh, there to the pathway through the tree of life, uh, with, with birds and things flying around. It's another one. And another one. I've seen various things looking like that on mountains and different things, um, pathways. You know, thing is, the more you practice, the easier it gets. You know, and then you go from just seeing into those realms to walking in there. And some of you are already doing that. You're already walking in those places, which is awesome. You know, and the more you start to engage, the more God will start to show you places, take you places, and eventually you will be able to go to places that you want. Because remember, in the heavenly realms, you can go at the speed of thought. So you can think of something and go there. But obviously, you have to have been there, or God show you something to think of it. Um, you know, you've got the biblical stuff, so the throne room and the garden and different things, but actually God may take you to a place to start with. You know, he took me to various places. I didn't have any choice. I just went there. But now, having been there, I can go back. So I can choose to go back to certain places and certain things that I've seen. Particularly, you know, I love waterfalls and rivers and I spent a lot of time splashing around swimming. Um, but they were always revelatory things to me. Lots of pools that I had to swim down the bottom to. There was always something at the bottom that God wanted me to delve into. Just how the symbolism worked for me. But, you know, you'll find your own ways. You can be there for 10 minutes in this realm and it seemed like there's an hour or hours there. Because the time is a different, it's a different thing. So I would come out of these encounters and then try and write them down. The longest it took me was three hours to write down one encounter. And it's like my hand was just absolutely uh, cramped at the end of it because I was desperately trying... And then God said, it's all right, you'll remember what I want you to remember. So I was like, oh, all right, you know, it's okay. Because <laughs> I, I didn't want to forget anything. You know, and it's because I was like, oh, wow, 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 I want to get this all down. Sometimes God will take you somewhere and you've got no choice. But actually, if you're in the encounter, go with what your gut is saying to you. 
and actually you know sometimes just stay and look because what you see is can be really symbolically important like how I see Jesus in encounters has a meaning for me you know it's like the way I see him is the way he wants to show me something and so there's no right or wrong way you just have to experience because you're we're all unique you know we've all got our own way of engaging with God and heaven actually there are multiverses of heaven that we relate to there are some things that are as they are but a lot of things we engage with heaven in a way which is very personal because God wants us to engage in a way that means revelatory things for us so yeah things like we just want to stop if you get that feeling to stop stop only you only you can tell in a sense that that if you feel there's something significant you want to get then stop and see you know bottom line is once you've encountered something go back there the next time if you think there's more to see most of the time when I've written things down I've gotten more revelation when I've reviewed it and meditated on it afterwards than I got when I had the first encounter because I was just like wow whoa when you see stuff like that it's like whoa and it's like half the time I was just I don't know what's going on you know particularly when I went out into the planets and into galaxies and things and saw some stuff and I'm like I don't get this you know and I was thinking that it's like what is this about but I wrote it down and then I went back and then I asked God what were you showing me and it was like oh, I had this amazing journey I went out to this planet and there was all these rings around it going vertically around this planet and I'm like wow and it's like okay well what was that about and God said well I wanted to show you what you missed on the journey and I think, oh, what did I miss on the journey? <laughs> and actually, I missed the fact that there was no darkness. And God was showing me what it was like when he created things without darkness. There was no dark energy, dark matter, any of that stuff. It was just, and I'm like, I missed the whole point of that. But, I, you know, I just felt, oh, all right. <laughs> so, you know, but God showed me. And it, all this is just relationship. You know, now, these encounters are great to build that relationship but ultimately what they are is to enable us to engage in the realms of heaven and to bring heaven to earth to bring rule the government of heaven to earth to learn all the protocols and all that sort of stuff but we can have fun you can just engage and learn to have fun with God you know and just keep going back for more all right so homework, practice, all the stuff we've been doing. Listen to some more of the Guildford stuff if you if you got time, and uh, that goes through very much in dealing with the gateways and opening all that stuff in in a more consistent way. Um, we didn't go to the garden today. We'll look at that next time because building the garden of your heart and engaging God there is just as important as engaging Him in the heavens.